today's episode of PJ and the Beard, we're gonna take a look at a guitar. But before we get into that, we'd like to ask you to consider subscribing to the channel, clicking on the notification bell. Your interaction with us helps us interact with great people in the industry. And in this case, we went back to our friends at Zounds and we got in the Sire S7FM. It looks like this. Excuse me. And the transparent blue comes in two other colors. Yeah, so we've been running through various HSS guitars. Mm -hmm. We had three of them in. This is the third video. Right. Um, the other one was a Strat, the other one, Fender Strat, and then there was a Yamaha Pacifica. And so after this video, I think we're going to sit down and video and do all three together. Right. So that's coming up. Uh, stay tuned for that. Today we're talking about this. Uh, we don't get into the geeky stuff so much, but we do talk about what we like. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do it first, so <laughs> Pat has to think hard. Um, for me, it's pretty easy. This neck, this roasted maple neck, mm -hmm. feels great. It's and then they rolled the edges on the frets and they did a really nice job. Uh, this would not be tearing pantyhose. No, it would not. If you happen to rub your pantyhose on the guitar. <laughs> neck, I, guess. I try not to, but sometimes you can't help it. <laughs> People do that. Yeah, this neck feels great. Um, I like how the, the markers on the side pop too on that dark. Just notice that. Uh, tuners. Locking. Staggered pull pieces. Uh, the first two are higher. You know, um, that's really nice. Bone nut. Um, I don't want to take everything that Pat might want to talk about, so maybe I'll stop there. But for me, that really, that, that uh, it does look, I like the silver. Yeah, the logo. Yeah, it looks really classy, too. But those locking tuners, and they work great. <laughs> they work great. I might tell you how we know that later. Yeah, we, we, we know that for a fact. Um, yeah, what do you got? It was interesting. I saw this exact guitar, not this one, but one just like it in the wild uh, last December. I went to some Christmas show and in the pit, the guy had one. Couldn't say enough about it. Never played one. We got in the L8, mm -hmm. like the Les Paul style one, played that. We got this one in and it it didn't disappoint. I'll tell you, the, the pickups are really nice. They're all nice. Uh, the neck is really nice. Well, and I probably should have Go on. I probably should have said the pickups. But well, you had to leave me something. This, is, this isn't final thoughts yet, so I'll shut up. No, but it's comfortable neck. It's like a C-shaped neck. Uh, like you said, rolled edges, uh, frets, or there's no fret sprouts. And um, just real comfortable to play. Uh, the action may be a little high for me, uh, but not high by any means. Uh, easy to play. Yeah, I think the action could probably come down a little bit. But right. out of the box, not unplayable. No. But if we were going to keep this for a long period of time, we'd probably pull the action right. down a little bit. Um, should we get right into the sounds? Yeah, we, well, we I talked about the pickups. You can show them what they sound like. All right, so <laughs> we'll jump right into the pickups. Started on the bridge and just walked up through. Uh, interesting to note on this guitar, there is no way to split the bridge. So you stay, like if you're in first position, full bridge. When you go to two, it cuts out the black coil. Mm -hmm. So then you are like a traditional Strat, single, single, and then middle, single, second, single with the neck and then just neck. And so I walk through that here. For my first clip, and I may have done this with one of the other HSS, because what makes this unique is the is the H, <laughs> is the rear humbucker. So I went and got out one of the Keeley 4-in-1s, the Angry Orge. And again, I always say on these pedals, I, I love the hybrid settings. So I had the Muff Tone and the uh, DS1 Drive, put it in the rear pickup, set the, set the Echo Tour to sort of slap back ish played it through the Tyler, and I did this.
we do a guitar, a lot of times we jump back. And sometimes it's pedals like the, the Keeley that we just we want to share some love to off the shelf. And then other times you jump into an old series. Well, how about a new series? Uh, we have a series on the Univibe. And not out yet, as, as this is being released, but recorded, is a video on the Roto Vibe from Wild Audio or Dunlop, however that works. And I thought I would take this for a spin. Uh, and this pedal sounds great. Mm -hmm. I was going to say sticking with the series motif, but it's not official yet, but we have started to record some chorus pedals. And um, in anticipation of that, we got in the Walrus Audio Julia. I have played this a few other times. It is a great sounding pedal. I played it obviously with the star of the show, the Echo Tour and the Tyler. And um, tried to go back to the 80s, maybe? You tell me. <laughs> Whenever we're doing a guitar, we try to take it for a spin too, a little jam. So this first jam, I was playing the Sire, and uh, I, this pedal has been used a lot in this little kind of, I don't know if it's a series, this little mini, this mini exploration maybe. Um, but it's the Vintage Modern from Love Pedal. I had this pedal, ran it into the Echo Tour from the, the LS Effects, and kind of, I think I had a little more delay on than typical and mm. the, into the Tyler. Um, and I'm just going to say, I did a lot of, I, I think I spent most of my time between the neck pickup and the bridge, but I rolled the volume up and down a lot and I cannot get over how responsive these pickups are mm -hmm. to your touch and to changes in the volume knob. So that's, watch for that. Uh, what were you doing? Well, and since, uh, we have it around, I grabbed one of the other HSS, it's the Yamaha Pacifica and, uh, played it straight into... PV Classic 30, because yeah. our trusty Fender Hot Rod was being a little squirrely. It was a little squirrely evening overall, wasn't it? Yes, it was. The, the Fender wanted to act up a little bit, so we plugged into the PV. I just played it straight with reverb from the amp, and this is what we did.
So we always record the clips before we record the jam. And so this love pedal, the, the vintage modern was the one of the clips. And that's why I just stuck around for the jam. Uh, in this clip, I went through all five pickups, played wide open, rolled it back and just played the same riff over and over. Wide open, rolled it back, next pickup, wide open, rolled it back. I think I started, I believe I started on the, the neck this time though and went the other way. Um, and then at the very end, I think I clicked it back onto the neck, mm -hmm. left the volume all the way up and just tried to pick a little lighter because it feels, I can't get over it. Like I said earlier, they're super responsive. Mm -hmm. If you pick light, the drive kind of goes away. If you dig in, you get all the drive back and then they respond. They clean up really nice, rolling the volume back. Um, do you feel like I'm digging the pickups? <laughs> <laughs> All right, for my final clip, I wanted to go to our tremolo series. And with that, I grabbed the Ultra Tremolo from TruFi. It is a fine tremolo in one of the most sturdy enclosures in the business. And uh, I also went back to the Keeley shelf here and grabbed the Blues Disorder, had it all totally on the BB side just to give it a little bit more push. And what happens is Jason will play his clips first. We record them and then I play mine. And because I saw how the neck responded to that vintage modern. I added a little bit of this. And so I did more of a ad lib thing and I dug in and I pulled back and did a bunch of different things just because that neck pickup is pretty inspiring. And this is what I did. And now because the tones coming out of, out of that guitar have been so good tonight, I, I feel like. Uh, for my last clip, I grabbed the Electro Harmonics cockfight. Because why wouldn't you? Because yeah, why, <laughs> why wouldn't you? If you really want to hear how the guitar sounds, <laughs> grab a pedal like this. And just to make it even better, 
I grab the mission engineering EP1, plugged it in, this expression pedal for the cockfight. So uh, if you care, I had it on pre-fuzz. So the wall was pre-fuzz on the crybaby side. Uh, this pedal is just fun. It sounds like this. <laughs> Before we get into final thoughts, we always have one last jam. We set it up before we get there. Uh, and again, kind of the same thing that happened with the beer that that uh, Love Pedal was on the board. He liked the way it sounded. He kept it for the jam. I had this out to pair up with the tremolo, as I said, and uh, tweaked it a little bit. Um, but I, I wanted to really let these pickups shine through. I tried to play with as little drive as possible, which is very painful to me. But as you probably hear, I probably compensated with delay. But... Uh, I wanted to really try to feature uh, the pickups, and so I, I use this uh, this uh, Blues Disorder, which I keep finding out that it's probably the best-selling pedal in the 4-in-1 series, and I'm beginning to understand why. Gotcha. Uh, to back you up, straight into the PV Classic 30, because the Fender was doing a weird thing. It was like sizzling, and then the volume dropped on a little bit. I'm, I'm afraid it's going to have to go in for <laughs> some TLC. Uh, I grabbed the... Um, a Gibson 335. Uh, I can't, I want to say like 81 or something like that. 80s. Uh, played that straight into the PV Classic 30. So nothing special going on there. Uh, you can stick around for our final thoughts right now. You can use the chapters down below, jump to that jam. We always like to give a little bit of an opinion on this. Mm -hmm. uh, Pat, what do you have final thoughts wise? Yeah, I guess I'll go back to starting with the pickups just because I think um, it was it was really, really great. Uh, this was nice. We had another one that didn't split 50-50. Like this just totally cuts out when you when you go to two. But you got that true two position that your ear is so used to hearing. Uh, but then you got that full beef in the back. Like when I used the angry orange, that was really full and fat. So And I didn't go just middle. I think you might have done it once. But the neck, I really thought the neck was really great. Uh, again, this roasted maple neck, the C-shape. It's a 25 and a half inch scale, which anytime I hear that, I think PRS, because that's what we really like and that's what PRSs mm. are. So that could be another reason that this is very comfortable because we tend to play a lot of those. Again, I think as we said, when we did the um, the L8, I mean, it's Larry Carlton. So everything is refined, right? All the, the Classic. Look, yes. This one a little modern. I think that's what the FM is for because this has this full humbucker. They do make just an S7 that is just the traditional... But I like the extra uh, girth there. We really didn't um, go too far along here with the tremolo. We might have wiggled it a couple times, but uh, overall, it's it's really great. And I didn't really explore this. I know this tone obviously controls the bridge, maybe solely the bridge. I didn't test this out because usually I think it's a whole guitar. Okay, <clears throat> so real easy to play. Uh, my only thing is, if the action were down just a smidge, it would have been probably not being shipped back to Zounds. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, okay. Final thoughts. All night we've been throwing around reasons why we should not keep it. True. Um, we have between the two of us how many strats, how many single, single, single mm. guitars. Um, the neck feels great. The pickups sound great. We recorded the clips in record time the night we recorded the jams i think in record time the night and one of the things that i'm starting to learn and we're starting to learn um when we get something down here that inspires us and we're not saying that we're the greatest players in the world but i mean it doesn't matter what level of guitarist you are there's things that will inspire you to play and when we get stuff down here that inspire us it always seems to be a much easier yeah, night it makes our work easier right <laughs> This was an easy night. So I'm going to leave it at that and just say I am uh, super blown away. 
uh, this does feel good. I will say if um, <laughs> somewhere we'll share it, but we did brought, I did bust the string up here on a nice uh, D minor. I, we were all the way up there and I bet it up and it broke. And man, <laughs> I was like, I'll just finish. We were really close to the end of the jam. I'll just finish it out. Right. No, you won't. <laughs> and we didn't pull a BB King. You didn't change it on the fly and your guitar tech didn't come switch it out like SRV. It, right. it, uh, camera stopped. <laughs> but we looked around. We found a 10 that we could throw on there because we're pretty sure it has 10s on it. And um, yeah, locking tuner. Spin the thing, push it through, spin it, tune it up, go. Uh, it was real, real easy. So yeah, that's my final thoughts. What a great guitar. I forgot to mention real, real abalone pearl, and also I'm a sucker for the pearl aid pick guards because all my guitars from the '90s had those on them. Seven hundred and five dollars. <throat> yes, seven oh five. Um, a lot of times you hear like people say this is a really good guitar for the money. <laughs> this is a well, this is a good guitar for more money. Right, right, right. You like could add to you could add to the price tag and you wouldn't blink. <clears throat> no, right. Digging it. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, you know, if you take the time to hit that subscribe button, appreciate it. Click notification bell. Uh, leave a comment. Anytime you interact with the channel, that's what helps us interact with cool people like Zounds and everybody else. Get cool stuff in to share with you. Uh, check these out if you can find them. And with that, I'm PJ on behalf of the Beard, reminding you no matter what you hear, you never have too much gear. <laughs>